Morning, everybody. You guys are with it today. That's awesome. And uh, hey, Joel is in the house via video. Okay, we're going to see him in a little bit. Um, so today is Baptism Sunday, and Joel and I were set to team teach. And so I'm going to walk us through the first 10 minutes or so of our teaching uh, because what we're about to do is, is really important in terms of its spiritual significance and, imp- and also with regard to its symbol of our own salvation and our own walk with Jesus. So in order to understand this well, we need to go all the way back to before Jesus was born. And if you're familiar at all with a Christmas story, you'll recognize the statement that's on, that's on the video screen. And it was the angels who said to the shepherds before they went to see the newborn Jesus, they said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. I've underlined good news because there's something about the coming of Jesus that is inseparably tied to this concept of good news. And there's a very specific kind of good news, but before we get into the kind of good news, I just want to start and say that the basic message of God to all people is not one that says, shape up or I'll send you to hell. There's not a lot of good news in that, is there? The basic message of God to all people is good news. Now, a little while later, Matthew records about Jesus. And by the way, it's not Luke 2.10. I'm sorry, that's a victim of cut and paste. This is actually Matthew 9.35. It says, Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee announcing what? The good news. We see that, that theme again about the kingdom. And here's where we learn another thing. Not only is Jesus connected with good news, but the good news is somehow connected to a kingdom. And and he uses the word announcing. When we use the word announce, it means that we are actually telling people of an event or something that is coming That is important. So Jesus was making an announcement. And it was an announcement about the good news. And it was an announcement about the kingdom. Well, that brings up a couple of really important questions. And here they are. What is the good news? And what kingdom is Jesus announcing? Because if we really want to understand the entire ministry of Jesus and why he came to earth, we actually have to know the answer to those two questions. And fortunately for us, Scripture is really clear. Did you know that Jesus talked and taught more about the kingdom than any other subject? It's that important. And oh, by the way, next Sunday we are beginning a brand new teaching series and it's simply called The Kingdom of Jesus. And we're going to be looking at the kingdom of Jesus, this wonderful thing he invites us into and actually calls us to. So let's start with what is the kingdom that Jesus is announcing? The kingdom actually is this. All of us are fairly familiar with the idea that God rules and reigns in heaven. And we think of God's kingdom as being in heaven. But Jesus came with a really important announcement. And the announcement he's making is up here, that God has decided to extend his kingdom beyond the reaches of heaven to now include earth. In in business terms... God had decided to open up some kingdom of God franchises on the face of the earth. 
You know what we call those franchises? Churches. Yeah. God is extending His kingdom from heaven to earth. And friends, is that big news? That's awesome news. It doesn't get any better than that. I know somebody won $1.2 billion over the weekend, but you know what? You couldn't buy a square foot of heaven with that. Right? But it is available. And you don't have to win the lottery to get it. In fact, when Jesus came and He paid for your sins, you won the lottery. You got it? It doesn't get any bigger than that. So that's the kingdom Jesus was announcing. What specifically is the good news? I love this. The good news is this, that God's kingdom now exists on earth and he is making it available to all what? I chose that word on purpose. Not to differentiate between you and the people of Mars or any any other thing. But you know why I use the term earthling? Because the kingdom of heaven has existed in eternity and there were no earthlings in it. Only heavenly beings. And you and I are very different from the heavenly beings. And God said, I want to open my kingdom. Not just to heavenly beings, to angels and spirits and heavenly creatures and all these things. I want to open my kingdom to people. To those that live on earth. Now my son Jesus, would you go to earth and announce that? It's big stuff. Now that we understand that, let's ask maybe a little deeper question. And the deeper question is this. So what does that good news look like in real life? This entering the kingdom of God and living in the kingdom of God. What does that look like in real life? Well, I want to take us to a passage of Scripture that sort of lays the foundation. And then we're going to see three great principles that come out of this. And the passage of Scripture you see on the video screen right now. God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Let's stop right there. When, When people are reconciled, what has to have happened prior to the reconciliation? A falling out, correct? You know, my wife and I did not get reconciled this morning, okay? Because we did not have a falling out last night. There have been some mornings when we had a reconciliation. (laughs) Fifty years of marriage brings several of those mornings. Yeah. So what is the falling out? Well, Paul goes on to describe what the falling out is. Not counting people's sins against them. You and I, though we don't like to do it, All of us sin. Anything you've ever done in your life that you regretted, you could look at that and and say, wow, that was less than desirable. That was considerably less than perfect. Huh. Now, without getting into all the detail of, of Scripture and theology, The scripture teaches very clearly that our sins stand between a holy and righteous and wonderful and loving and good God and us. And until those sins are taken away, there's this barrier that sits there. And the good news is this. God said, I am going to do something about that barrier. I'm going to tear down that wall and I'm going to do that through my son so that I no longer have to count people's sins against them. And then Paul says this wonderful thing that still extends to this church today. God has committed to us 
the followers of Jesus this wonderful message of reconciliation. That's why we get together. That's why we talk about the good news. So there are three wonderful applications, more than three, but three we're going to look at today that are really important to us. In God's kingdom, people are restored back to God's personal family. I don't have time to get into it this morning, but if you want to come for the kingdom series, you're going to see this laid out from Scripture over and over again. But take me at God's word. In God's kingdom, people are restored to his personal family. We are adopted into the royal family of God when we choose to become part of the kingdom of God. And here's where we learn a really important principle when it comes to God. Everybody's loved. Everybody. Jesus illustrated that over and over and over again. And this morning, as people are baptized, every single person who's getting baptized today, they already know this. We went over this. Every single person getting baptized is a sinner because they're living, breathing human beings. And yet they are deeply and fully loved, not just by God, but by God's family. That's all of us. A second wonderful principle about this good, is, is that good news that we're all loved? That's awesome news, okay? A second principle is this. In God's kingdom, people are forever forgiven of the wrongs they have done. Have you ever said something and wished that you could unsay it? Yep, we've all done that. The amazing thing about what we have done that we wish we hadn't done, God said, hey, give me the etch-a-sketch of your life. I'm going to turn that thing upside down and shake it. And when you turn it back over again, it's going to be completely blank. Because everything you wrote on that slate that you hate, it's all gone. Because here's another really important reality in the kingdom of Jesus. And that is there is an understanding that nobody's perfect. And we accept that about each other. And God accepts that about us. But he doesn't just leave us there. There's a third great principle, and here it is. In God's kingdom, people are changed through the power and the presence of God's Spirit in them. Aren't you glad that that's part of the good news? I know that some of us struggle with change, but you know something? There's something way worse than change, and that's not being able to. Imagine if you were just stuck. And God says, you know, I'll forgive you, but I'm not helping you. You're just going to have to live like that. No. And Jesus said it over and over and over again. And one day... His closest followers looked at him when Jesus made it, laid out a, a spiritual truth that seemed like it was impossible for them to achieve. And they looked at Jesus and they said, how is this possible? And Jesus said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And the third great reality in the kingdom of Jesus is anything's possible. I kind of want to pull over to the side for a minute because those three realities encapsulate the ministry of Jesus wherever he went. When people came to Jesus and they came either to be healed or to hear him teach. Every person who came seemed to understand that they were loved by Jesus and safe in his presence. If you study his life, you know that's true. It could be Nicodemus who was a wealthy aristocrat 
who was a spiritual leader of the country, or it could be a woman who was caught in the very act of sleeping with a man who was not her husband and brought to Jesus to be stoned to death. It didn't make any difference. Both felt equally safe and loved and comfortable in the presence of Jesus. Every person who came to Jesus, He spoke directly to their brokenness in the most kind and loving way. And every person recognized that though I am loved by Jesus, Jesus is calling me to a different and a better life because I'm broken. I'm imperfect. None of us is perfect. And seemingly, the people who came to Jesus left with an understanding that as broken as they were, they were not broken beyond what God could help. That with God, anything is possible. So, is it asking too much to ask you to memorize those things? Are you ready? There are three things. I'll say them first, and then I want you to say them with me because they were the heartbeat of Jesus and they actually are the heartbeat of our church and you're going to hear them over and over and over again in the coming months because we are going to and we uh, historically have lived out these values. And the first is everyone's loved. Second is nobody's perfect. Third, anything's possible. Can you say those with me? Ready? Everyone's loved. Nobody's perfect. Anything's possible. So what is baptism? Baptism is a declaration. It's a declaration that I am choosing to live in God's kingdom. That's literally what it is. Jesus came announcing the good news of the kingdom. And when the invitation was extended and Jesus said, hey, who wants in on this? The way that people raised their hands to God was they chose to get baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So baptism is that wonderful declaration that says, God, I hear your good news, and I'm in. Now, I told you Joel was in the house. Joel was going to teach the second half of this, and Joel still is. So I want you to direct your attention to the video screens. I know you got used to this during COVID, So here you go. Would you please welcome with me our lead pastor, Joel. Well, hey, new life. Life has a certain way of being ironic, doesn't it? We were so going to be with you today on our final Sunday and earlier this week our oldest daughter was away at Young Life Camp and she came home and has COVID. Our family is fine, she's doing fine, but out of an abundance of caution we needed to not show up to be physically with you, which is such a bummer, but it's almost a picture of what the last two and a half years have been like. We've had these plans and dreams all along the way, and yet there were curveballs and left field moments. And yet through it all, we've seen God do some really amazing things in all of our stories as we've listened to him and sought to say, okay, what do you want from my life so I can experience all that you have for me in life? And even though we can't be with you Physically, we are with you in spirit today as we celebrate as a church because we have some friends who are taking the step of following Jesus into baptism. And I know Ron explained a lot about what this means from the standpoint of, hey, there's good news that the kingdom of Jesus is coming. It's at hand and we get to step into it and help partake in it and bring it into reality in our world. But not only is that what baptism helps us step into, It's a beautiful picture of this incredible thing that Jesus has done and is doing in our lives. I remember I was about 10 years old, and it was a moment in my life where I realized I I, I wanted to follow Jesus. I'd, I'd been raised in a family that was doing our best to follow after Him, but I knew there was a point in my own story where I had to make that decision. And, and so I said to my dad, hey, I, I want to get baptized. And 
And so that little church that I grew up in, we met at the East Whittier YMCA. And so on a Sunday, we gathered together as a church at the pool and I took the plunge. Uh, I made the commitment to follow Jesus, to give him my life. And, and I think sometimes as we get ready to take that step, there, there's some confusion about what maybe it means for us, that, that maybe it means that we, we, we have to have it all figured out or have it all put together. And, and yet I know for me as a 10 year old, what, what did I know about the, the overwhelming beauty of who God is and the truth of him and the things that I have grown to understand about him in my journey of life. But here's what I did know at 10. I knew God loved me. I knew Jesus was the path to life and that he was inviting me into something with him. And, and I wanted to say, I'll follow you. And so at 10 years old, that was enough. And, and I took that step and I entered into the waters of baptism. And, and baptism is this beautiful picture of what Jesus has done for us. It's, it's the symbol of, of saying goodbye to our old life and stepping into new life with him. And so this beautiful picture, when we go under the waters of baptism, it's, it's as if we're, we're laying down and dying to our old life. And as we come up out of the waters of baptism, it's, it's as if we're saying, Jesus, I want to step into this new life you have for me, this new life you've come to give me. And, and, and you're washing me and you're making me clean and, and doing something new in my story. And, and so we're going to celebrate with friends who are taking that step today. And, and I want to encourage you, if you're here today and you're like, I, I, I want this life that Jesus has for me. I, I want to commit myself to him, to follow him the best I know how then this moment would be for you too. So I would just encourage you to, when baptisms start, make your way on up, find Ron, find some of the leaders and say, hey, can, can, I, can I take the plunge? And, and they'll help you do that too. And, and I want to encourage everyone here today to celebrate as we do this beautiful step of baptism. Sometimes I think we can, we can get confused about where we need to be in our own journey of faith to, to take that step of baptism, kind of some extremes that we can fall into. And, and what I, I would just want to help you understand, for those of you that are getting baptized, those of you that are visiting, watching your friends or family take this step, and those of us that are just hanging out to celebrate and cheer them on, well, when somebody comes to take that first step of baptism, what they're doing is committing their life to Jesus and saying, I want this new life you have for me. Would, would you come into my life? Would you come into my story? Would, would you forgive me for the brokenness and offer me something new? And, and I'm committing, I'm, I'm, I'm calling you my Lord. I'm, I'm calling you the one who is my leader. I'm going to follow you. And, and it doesn't mean we have it all figured out or we have to have all the answers perfectly nailed down. That's the journey of following him as he leads us into discovering the beauty of life with him in this place. And, and so on one extreme, we, we don't have to have it all figured out. We don't have to have it all buttoned up. We don't have to walk on water. We, we just have to be willing to say, yes, Jesus, I want you. And yes, Jesus, I want to learn to listen to you and, and follow you as you lead me in life. But then there's this other extreme that we can sometimes fall into the mistake of thinking that, well, I, I'm dying to my old life. I'm stepping into a new life with him. And so, well, no, nothing really needs to change. Like I can just kind of live how I've been living, doing my merry own thing and, and, and say, Jesus, would you just kind of sign off on this life as it is and thank you and, and would you follow me is kind of what we ask when we say that. And, and yet that, that's not really what it would mean. It, it means that Jesus, I, I'm going to trust you with all of me as I follow you. And so when you talk to me about life, when you, you talk to me about reality, when you talk to me about what it means to be human, when you talk to me about what it means to follow and listen. I'm, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go with you. I'm, I'm committing myself to you. Even if I don't always understand it in the moment. Because I trust this to be true about you. You are good. And you love me. And you have life for me. And if I will take the journey with you and trust you. When you talk to me about the things that don't always make sense to me in the moment. I believe that in time I will step into the reality of all that you have for me. And I will come to a point in my story where I begin to see you did know what you were talking about. I was scared or confused or kind of standoffish, but I gave you the benefit of the doubt and I trusted you. And that's the commitment we're making in baptism. Jesus, wherever you're going, take me with you. Whatever you're doing, let me be in it 
with you. You have my faith. You have my life. I trust you. I believe you. I will follow you. And so friends, let's celebrate with those that are getting baptized today. And so in just a moment, our worship team is going to come up on the stage and they're going to lead us in a special song. And I just want to encourage you to just let this song help set the tone in your mind for what baptism is going to be. And while they're doing that, those of you that are getting baptized, I want to encourage you to come on up and get ready for the moment. And then when the baptisms start in the room, here's what you do. Get up off your stand up. And as they're being baptized, I want you to celebrate and cheer them on and clap and applaud. We talked about being a Jesus fan last week, meaning how do we fan the flame of life, of this passion for him. And so today, let's be the kind of fans that help cheer and encourage those who are taking the step today. And so New Life, we love you. We're with you in this moment. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. So I want to invite you to stand right now. We have a camera up in the loft, so you're going to be able to see into the tank. And that's a new improvement, but we are going to celebrate. And those of you who are ready to get baptized, Please come down over here by the tank. And if God's been speaking to your heart today through what you've heard and, and you now know I want to walk with Jesus and I want to take this step, uh, you can come down and uh, you might not have an additional change of clothes. You're going to go home wet, but you're going to go home happy. I can tell you that for sure. So uh, worship band, take it away. down in the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the star and crown good lord show me the way oh sisters let's go down let's go down come on down come on sisters let's go down down in the river to pray as i went down in the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the robe and crown good lord show me the way oh brothers let's go down let's go down Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the star and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down let's go down come on down come on fathers let's go down down in the river to pray as i went down in the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the robe and crown good lord show me the
to pray, studying about that good old way. And who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. church. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony in my ears. To my ears, it's like a holy Every 
really makes me want to cheat. Come on. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing. church it's like sweet sweet honey on my lips oh on my lips like a sound of symphony to my ears holy water come on holy water your forgiveness it's like a sweet sweet honey on my I'm going to have a seat. Thank you, worship band. That was awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. A big congratulations to all who got baptized today. Yes. yes. So um, we have a little bit of family business to do. Are you ready for this? This is Joel and Christie's last Sunday with, with us. And in true COVID fashion, we're going to celebrate them via video, okay? <laughs> so I don't know if they can see us, but I know they're watching, okay? So I want to call for uh, the leaders of our church, the stewards, to come up here on the stage. And we are going to pray a blessing on the Enyart family as they go. Are you up for that? <laughs> yes, indeed. Go ahead. Come on up. We are going to celebrate. Dan did a great job of, of talking about all the periods that they have led us through. They're headed down to Southern California. Uh, Joel and Christy both have positions on the church staff down there, and uh, that's going to be great for them. Uh, and you know what? It's a place where they're going to thrive and their daughters are going to thrive. Are you happy for them? Yes. yes, me too. So we are so happy that we're going to eat cupcakes in their honor. Are you up for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do that. Uh, but before we do that, would you please stand? And Rick DeCarly, one of our stewards, is going to pray God's blessing on the Inyart family. Let's pray. God, you truly blessed us with the Inyart family. And Joel and Christy, you've had a plan for their life since they, since they were born. Um, and you've called them down south. I pray your richest blessing on their ministry. I uh, pray as the girls get situated in their new school and develop their new friends. God, I just pray you'll just bless them also. We thank you, God, for always providing for our needs, for loving this church. God, teach us to love you with everything we have, and we thank you so much for Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. I have a couple things to say before you go, okay? Uh, today we officially enter, uh, no, you can stay standing. Um, it's going to be short. Okay. Some of you know me really well. That's why you just sat down. It's like, okay, we enter an interim period, but I, I, I want to speak on behalf of the leaders who are up here. We are not going to put our church on hold and just wait. We have a mission to accomplish. Are you on board with that? Yes. God has things he wants to do with us and in us and through us. And so we are going to take some giant steps forward even over the next few months. And we're going to take some new territory for Jesus. And it's going to be awesome and exciting. I want to invite you to come back next week. We're going to start out talking about the kingdom of Jesus and, and this interesting interplay between truth and love. 
And we're going to see how they play together and sometimes how they can clash, but how God intended for them to work together and how Jesus lived that out beautifully. So if that piques your interest, you come back next week and we'll start laying out some vision and where God is taking us and what he wants to do in us. Thank you so much for coming today. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and grab a cupcake on the way out. Bye, Joel and Christy. God bless you guys.